Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and I have designed a 100% scientific and completely objective method of typing you into a Hogwarts house. So take on the sorting hat guys, now I'm gonna talk about the four different Hogwarts houses and which house you fit in based on your MBTI personality type. Now take in mind this is 100% scientific and it uses the advanced uh, personality system designed by J.K. Rowling. So in J.K. Rowling's system there are four houses you can fit into. Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw and Slytherin. Gryffindor values according to her courage, bravery, nerve and chivalry. Hufflepuff values hard work, patience, justice and loyalty. Ravenclaw values intelligence, creativity, learning, and wit. Slytherin is evil and values uh, pure bloods, Voldemort, and status. No, okay, Slytherin values ambition, cunning, leadership, and resourcefulness. So I've designed a system that will fit you into your Hogwarts house based on your preferred cognitive functions. So if you know the cognitive functions, you know which house you belong in. Now there are 16 cognitive functions. Uh, yeah, not eight cognitive functions, but 16 cognitive functions. If you also factor in for functions which are judging or perceiving in their nature. So a function cannot just be introverted or extroverted, but it can also be more proactive compared to more adaptable. So using the 16 cognitive functions, there are multiple different results you could possibly get on a Hogwarts house test, depending on which type you are. Not all MTI types fit perfectly into these four boxes designed by J.K. Rowling. So the first one to look at is extroverted feeling. Extroverted feeling is the function most associated with passion, with speaking your mind, expressing yourself, sharing how you feel, chasing your dreams, doing what you feel is right, you know, going for what you really want in life, you know, going out and uh, doing something that you love and chasing your passion, even if your passion might fail or even though it might be difficult at times, you know, standing up for your passion and expressing what you believe in and what you feel is right. And that fits perfectly with the values of Gryffindor alongside extroverted intuition. Extroverted intuition representing potential, opportunity and a chance and ability to have nerve to do something, to try something and to keep trying at something and to try new things and to keep an open mind, you know, to read rooms, see what could be, always look for an open door, look for a new way to pass through, a new thing to do, something that will help you get further in life, you know. That ability, I feel, is very, very Gryffindor and it represents, most importantly, perhaps freedom and free spiritedness, you know, to be able to do what you want, not just what everyone else is doing, but to do what you want, most of all. Now, another very Gryffindor trait is intuitive perceiving or the act of rebellion, rebelliousness, daring, you know, going against the flow, seeking your own path, you know challenging the room, you know, having your own opinions and thoughts and ideas and daring to express them or to test them out even if other people may want to control you or may want to set rules for you or stop you to do what you feel is right, genuinely. Now, feeling perceiving is another very, very Gryffindor function. And it's the last of four functions you'll find in the Gryffindor house. Feeling, perceiving, that represents the ability to be truly honest, to truly speak your mind, to say what you care about, you know, to express yourself, to put yourself out there, to put yourself on display for other people, to speak your mind and to share of yourself and to, you know, be natural, to be yourself. And uh, I think there is nothing more Gryffindor than the act of being yourself, even when it's difficult and even when it's impractical and even when the system wants you to conform and when uh, everyone says to do this or to do that, you know, to want to be yourself and to want to be true to yourself. Now, if you look at the radical opposite of Gryffindor, 
I think it's debatable, actually. Is it Slytherin or is it Ravenclaw? I think it's Ravenclaw. And I think Ravenclaw is perhaps best represented by ambition and, you know, hard work and with sticking to the rules and with the law, you know, trusting in the law, trusting in the systems, you know. Often I feel the Ravenclaws, they, they form abstract mental models of the world, you know. They philosophize on how the world should be. They devise rules for how things should work. They come up with laws and principles, you know. This is how things should be. This is how things should work. Using introverted thinking and introverted intuition, Introverted thinking helps them design and say what is critically the best way to do something. Approaching a li the life and the world mathematically, what is the smartest way to do something? What are the rules in play and how can we use them? Which rules work best and how could we apply them better? How can we make sure everyone will stick to the game? How can we make sure everyone will play along? How can we make sure that... Uh, we can all work together and do something in a smart and efficient manner. It's Ravenclaw is productive, you know, Ravenclaw represents productiveness and projects and uh, pursuits that are intellectual in their nature. So it also represents having a vision, a bold vision, creativity, eccentricity, you know. NJ, intuitive judging, I've always felt has a lot to do with, you know, the archetype of the magician or the inventor, you know, the wacky inventor, you know, the person that says, I have an idea, I have a vision, I have like this crazy thing, you know, the Steve Jobsian idea or, or this uh, crazy wacky, you know, uh, path we could all take, you know, this entrepreneurial drive, I felt it's very NJ. And I also feel it's very Ravenclaw. Thinking and judging is very Ravenclaw. Intuitive judging is very Ravenclaw. Introverted intuition is very, very Ravenclaw. And introverted thinking is extremely Ravenclaw. There are, of course, two other houses worth mentioning. One of them is Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff is the most underrated house in Hogwarts typology and mythology. So it is one of the least discussed in the books. It's also... One that uh, J.K. Rowling has done a lot of work later on in life to redeem and to uh, bring up. And what she wanted to show with Hufflepuff was the values of, you know, understanding and acceptance and forgiveness. You know, introspection, understanding others, empathizing with others, seeing other people's viewpoint, you know, alongside your own, seeing what other people want and seeing what you want, and finding a balance, mediating between interests, setting aside your own needs for a minute to help other people, to see when other people are struggling or need a hand, and to offer that hand to other people to help them out. So Hufflepuff represents in many ways also beyond the introverted feeling and the ability to listen to other people and to step into other people's viewpoints. It also represents patience, you know, to have patience with another person, to be able to sit with another person and to wait with them while they struggle and while they're stuck on something or while they're upset. To be patient with other people and with the world, you know, to not demand too much too fast, but to take things slowly and methodically. To take things in small batches, you know, to look at the small things every person can do and to let things take time, to know that good things will take time and to have the patience to sit down and wait as they do, to balance yourself, to constantly work on inner harmony and inner peace, to be able to be okay with things taking a bit longer than expected, and to be have discipline, you know, sensing judging, to have discipline, to stay organized, to stay on track, you know, even if the world around you is changing, to be able to stick on course, you know, if you have a set course, or if you have something you want to do, or if you have a plan or somewhere to be every day, to show up, as you said, you know, to honor agreements, to be on time, as you said you would, to stick to approach as you promised, you know, to be able to honor agreements, to be loyal, to be trustworthy, to redeem yourself day in and day out, to show to other people that you can be trusted and that you will listen and that you will be there when it's necessary and that you will do what exactly what you've said you would do. 
Now, finally, the last house to mention is Slytherin. And I feel Slytherin represents, you know, a lot of different personality traits and cognitive functions for specific ones. Extroverted thinking and the drive towards results, pragmatism, you know, seeing what works, you know, to be able to look at and focus on the results, you know, the means justified ends, you know, if I can get the right solution, I've taken the right track, I've done the right thing, you know. Uh, to do good is to get the job done, whatever means necessary to do the right thing, to get things through, you know, to be fruitful, to have resources, to be resourceful, to apply what you have and to do the best of what you got. Extroverted sensing is another very slittering aspect, you know, to be in tune with nature and to read the room and to see how things work and to see how other people are and to understand your environment and to be able to adapt. You know, I think survival of the fittest is a concept that appeals very well to the Slytherin mind, you know, to be adaptable, to adjust to circumstance, to not cry when you have a bad day, but to make the best of what you have. If life gives you lemons, to make lemonade, you know to work with what you got and to use it to your best extent possible. I also feel slittering represents the ability to be genuinely competitive with other people, to be able to play the game, you know. If this is what people are doing, to be able to adjust, to play things out tactically, to know and read the room and see what other people are getting at, to see what they're doing, to see where they're going, and to be able to always remain one step ahead to be able to remain one step ahead that is very slytherin and it's also very estp yeah if you look at the cognitive functions in the hogwarts houses there are four specific matches to look at the enfp fits best naturally in gryffindor the isfj in hufflepuff the intj in Slyther in ravenclaw and the estp in slytherin so applying this you know there's 12 types that don't naturally fit in one house but beyond that I said that uh, this was 100% scientific and of course it's not it's not scientific it's not objective at all it was just the mental exercise that J.K. Rowling designed in her Hogwarts books you know in her Harry Potter books it was something she just wrote out to help us understand the characters that we were dealing with and their motivations and who they were and it was a very successful and great one, but it was, of course, not a valid, applicable personality psychology. So, you might look at this now and say, no, I would have done this differently, or I might have interpreted slightly differently, or I'm an ENFP and I feel I fit very well in Hufflepuff or in Slytherin, or now I'm actually a Ravenclaw ENFP, you know, and I'm kind of a paradox, you know. <laughs> I'm actually kind of a paradox, you know. A lot of ENFPs say that. Uh, INTJs uh, might do better in Hufflepuff or in Slytherin depending on circumstance, you know. You're not always who you are at your best, you're not always yourself in flow, you know. You're not always using your dominant natural cognitive functions and your circumstance may have changed you. So throughout life other values and cognitive functions may have come to become important to you. You might have come to become a slightly more daring and bold INTJ or perhaps you noticed that you started to gravitate towards being a slightly more perspective and thoughtful ESTP, you know, you might have developed over time to change, you know, based on circumstance. And what I've always said, what I always felt is, on the opposite end of a flow type, you know, I always talk about flow types and who we are at our best and our personality type in flow. We also have a stress type. Flip it, flip our four letters and we get our stress type. So the INTJ is under stress some kind of ESTP, ENFP combination. The ISFJ under stress is some kind of ENTP, INTJ combination. So looking at that, what you have to do is you have to look at also why do I gravitate towards a certain house and what you might find is yeah INTJs who are trying to grow might be more appealed by the ideals of Slytherin because they see Slytherin as a fast path to growth and to change and to learning and progress if they're currently stuck looking for what vision to follow or what path to take. Slytherin might appeal very much to them. 
or an INTJ that has uh, come to truly appreciate time and to taking time and to letting things develop slowly, an INTJ like that might develop better to fit in Hufflepuff. So everyone is a mix of these four very ambiguous houses and uh, yeah, there is some room for interpretation. So leave in the comments down below your best thoughts. What is your favorite Hogwarts house? Which person Hogwarts house do you fit the best in? What personality type are you? And which cognitive functions do you associate the most with which Hogwarts house? That's it for today. Thanks everyone for joining in. Feel free to like and share this video with others that you think might like it. And I hope to see you all in the next video. And on Thursday, everyone, Thursday at 6, GMT plus one, we're doing a meme special where everyone can submit their favorite meme. So take a chance to submit your favorite meme and to watch the meme special when it goes live. See you there. Have a good day, everyone. And thanks for watching.